Hey, good afternoon, Chip. How are you doing? Good to have you on board here. We're just waiting to get them, some things lined up here, and we're almost ready to fly. So thanks very much for tuning in, Chip. I hope everything's going well for you. And we'll get as started here in just a couple of seconds. So hang on. Thank you. Hey, Pixel, how you doing? Good to see you, Chief. How's everything? Thanks very much for a terrific job, and let's do this. Welcome to the Dream Lab. This is Dr. Contrast Live here, gang. Hope everything's well with you. Um, I just thought I'd uh, start the program today with a bit of a real quick uh, little um, uh, recovery and review of where we've been over the past couple of days, and hope that's kind of coming. Let me line it up on the screen a little bit. There we go. Uh, again, thanks so much for tuning in, uh, Pixel and Chip. Uh, good to have you on board here. And uh, just want to bring you up to speed, a uh, little bit of review uh, from where we were last Thursday, probably last Friday. Last Friday, I started a stream of, um, hey, hi, Betts, how are you? Good to see you again. Thank you so much uh, for joining. How are things in Chicago? Doing good? Super. Good to have you on board, uh, Betts. Um, so I'm going to go back and just review some things here very quickly before we get into this, uh, the, today's uh, stream about getting some gesture work on uh, just basic sketch rendering skills. Um, we did a lot of work last Friday on doing some exploratory sketches uh, from the rear three quarter of this G12 series, this, uh, this uh, Grand Touring machine. So I thought after that, I went back in and said, you know, um, maybe it's kind of nice to have to go through the interior stuff to go back to the front end graphics and really put together a little bit of a finished piece about maybe what some of the surfaces are doing here. So this is more of a front three quarter study again with the very round IMSA type lamping systems. I don't know if we're going to go that route or not, um, but uh, again, basic overall form. Getting that down, adding this uh, very, very massive uh, ground effects canard up front, and uh, adding some some spoilers and uh, and uh, additional uh, dihedrals on the right and left hand side of the wheels. Um, closed canopy again, but that's still with that survival cell uh, cell that's removable. But a very simple, fluid over overview of what the form is beginning to look like. So I thought that was a nice start. But once I saw that. Uh, and, and going back and looking at the material we worked uh, on on Friday of last week with the rear three quarters, it's still a little bit too automotive looking. So I, I'm going to switch gears here from that front end study. We went for that into a rear three quarter of going into things, for example, add a little bit of a, a little more color from yesterday to kind of finish off the sketch. But this is maybe the first theme on how to work with this guy in terms of uh, maybe the overall impact. You know, the front end graphics remain the same. Uh, very much of a high profile, this is a very long shoot canard coming through the machine into an airstream, you gotta take the air through the, the, the process, et cetera, and take it from there. But more concentrating on what the, the, the tail section with these, the, these hydrogen cylinders, the power plant and so forth, and some of the intake systems and some of the breathing gills and the movable flaps for air brake and so forth. And again, added a little feature up on top, LF35 air brake uh, to go along with that and some exhaust systems down below. So that was maybe the first pass at maybe doing a, um, a, a, a rear three quarter study for this G12. So I went from that process and maybe slowed down just a little bit more and the uh, same basic overall effect, uh, but the same look at uh, this, again, this rear three quarter. Maybe not as busy, a little bit more contained, um, a much larger intake in terms of um, cooling systems on the rear quarter area. Basic overall format remained the same, and just a little bit of a different uh, feature on the actual form itself uh, for exhaust systems. So then again, we went to, from that study, and then we went to the interior and looked at this as a, um, just interesting how it all came together with this, oh, hey, Pixel, good studies. I like some of the intake. Yeah, interesting. It was, it was just a real challenge to kind of get the front and rear to kind of mesh together, as I said last Friday. Or probably, yeah, it was last Friday, I think I put together a stream where the rear three-quarter studies looked a little bit too automotive yet. Uh, so uh, we took a little bit step further. And this is a, the first blush is an interior. We made a lot of revisions, for example, in the interior, for example. Um, these, these, um, these joystick control systems are still part of the process. A very highly cantilevered tunnel console and a very simple glass readout, um, impregnated the glass readout series is still there. But we added a couple of features that I thought were really very, very paramount uh, with the, uh, according to the hand controls and the ergonomics of this whole cockpit study. Hand controls up, acceleration, braking, and turn, and so forth. But again, what we added was these, these very high-powered control pods right and left-hand side of the, of the pilot. So there's much more accessibility from a reach position to be able to control some of the things that he has to control when he's at speed or going through the uh, circuit and uh, in the racing mode. So that's a real quick overview 
Oh, where we were, for example, um, on the, yesterday's stream, I just did the line drawings themselves and just really worked on a very simple series of pencil sketches. And then went back in uh, last evening and put the, a little bit of color to kind of give them a finished piece in case we want to go put them on Instagram or get them out in the, in the media, so to speak, uh, for people to observe and uh, look at. So there you are again. But the real purpose today, let me kind of switch gears. The real purpose today is we're going to be very simple. We've entitled this thing Product Design Gestures. And I'm going to use a term gesture that's very interesting to me because, um, yeah, you use a concept sketch, but a gesture to me is like ex an expression. The more you express something, the more flavorful it is, the more uh, the more flamboyant it is, the, the less governed by being stiff or, or uh, very uh, formal looking. So I want to go through a series of just simple little form studies here to kind of go back and regroup a little bit about just basic sketch rendering skills. And while I go through these studies, um, what I'd like to have all of us concentrate on is what I'm trying to do today in wrapping up uh, the stream for the week here is to do the following. For well, the last two streams, we were working on things like contour and also volumetrics. The volumetric system was interesting because that told us how we work with the five basic solids and how to put all these pieces together. And also how contour begins to do a very simple triadic formula that really works for us in everything we do and see. And it's simply this, that line is the surface, as surface is to form. And translating that is really simple, that a good contour study will give us a surface, which will again and produce a form. So it's all shape related. But I want to come back in and just do some real quick little pencil sketches here to kind of combine those elements together. So let's kind of go back in through here. This is going to start with a series of little concept sketches here. Notice real loose, fly through this stuff. Just kind of block it in just to get it started. Nothing really fancy. I'm just going to rough it in, put a gesture down. Again, I call it name gesture because again, it's much more expressive just to get it started here. So let's come back in. Let's pick up this a little bit more weight here. Come back in. I'll move this pad around quite a bit here. So pardon me, gang. Get that gesture to come down, put a little bit of sidewall in this guy. Just really kind of controlling the surface just a little bit more. It's still very gesturely, but much more control. Come underneath it just a bit more. Pardon me, as I rotate again. Come out of that radius into that sidewall. There it is there. Just come back in and let's, let's strengthen this basic baseline here. Let's come back in and get that to come through and notice fly through that. Radius it back in through here. There it is there. Come back in and begin to break that surface down a little bit. Run that shape right through. Step that up a little bit. Then come back in and pick up the underside of that and just, just a nice little quick and dirty study here. Now let's go put some weight on this thing. Let's kind of put a little section in this thing. Come back in a little bit of knowledge. I'm adding some contour. Just a real quick gesture. A little bit of surface work on this guy. Back to side of pencil. Tone it in. Release it. Into weights. Again, gesture. Just getting a weight down. Flying through it. Making it feel like it just happened just like that. Very simple. Again, a little bit of depth in here. A little bit underneath, a little bit of shadow underneath guy. A little bit of tone in through here, separate a little bit. Now it tells where the light source is, kind of change the pattern just a bit, run it across, run it through. Pick up a little bit of accent underneath this guy. Enter here, and look what happens by maintaining an empathy or a real rapid sketch in terms of just getting the character down and what this little still study is doing. It's just a, it's a strike. All it is, just getting down to the nitty gritty of laying down weights. Closest to me, thicken it up. As it fades, move it away. Little things like that. That guy right there means absolutely nothing, but it's cool. It just looks cool. That's all. Hey, how you doing, Shadow? Good to have you on board. That's your drawing pencil. Yeah, drawing a pencil sharpener. Yeah, just a simple everyday household element here, uh, Chip. I think pulling back a little bit and then again trying to reinforce today the importance again of working with. Um, Hey, Captain Nemo, how you doing? Didn't see you on the, on the line there. So, hey, good to have you on board. Thank you, sir. So the overview here is just to get back into the two things that the last two streams we were working on are, are basically have been, have been contour work and volumetrics. And I thought we'd pull back and go back and begin to use a little bit more sketch writing skill, just creating a gesture of things uh, that we can kind of go back to and, uh, and work, uh, work through and work on. So let's kind of go back here and just, again, working through some just simple little product sketches, just gestures. Nothing fancy, just to get a point down and to get a point across. Let me turn this around a little bit. Concentrating on just a nice, very fluid series of lines to kind of get the idea across. A little bit of shadowing through here, a little bit of tuck line through here, and then just letting it kind of disappear and fade into some sort of oblivion. There it is there. A little bit of shadow underneath this guy, and that's it. 
Let's just turn this back a little bit more. So just, just to kind of use the side of that pencil. I said this the other day in that stream, and I think it's so important to kind of point back up again here, uh, is this. I was, when I work with pencil, especially like with the Prismacolor, for example, I use this thing like a paintbrush. That to me is a paintbrush. I just walk into surfaces, go through them, generate certain things. Uh, but really interesting uh, how to uh, put together both line weight and surface and form with this. And let's go back and add some more. Let's go, just go through some real fast gestures. Spherical shape, get it in there, draw it through the equator, nice and lightly. Come back in and pick a point of reference, drop that in, come back into here, and very quickly just start to lay in just a simple little gesture. Look how that all came together so quickly. All set, game. Here we go. Come back in again, getting the gesture down. Come back in again, using that pencil, just kind of walk in some surface here, like a paintbrush, knocking it in where the light source is coming from, going back up and picking up some of the line weights here. Again, just a gesture, get an expression down. Up on top, nothing fancy, a bit of recess, nail that down. Come back out of this, pardon me. I'll indicate where that is. Indicate where the hot spot is. Bring this into play. Put a section line through this guy. A little bit of a little detail up on top. Just kind of break the surfaces up a little bit. And again, a little more tone underneath here. Reflective quality. Come back in again. Pardon me as I move around here just a little bit. Line weight. Then the line weight. And again, maybe just a little bit of this. Really expressive. Fast. Looking for a theme. To me, an expression um, is a gesture. The gesture of an expression is really interesting here. Hey, Doug, how are you? Good to see you. Everything good to have you on board here, gang. Thank you. Uh, Cyclop man, back man. <laughs> well said, Nemo. That's cool. Just looking at how to work with again volumetrics and putting together some of these services we've been dealing with for the last few days. Let's put a little more body in this thing. Just kind of come into that crescent, get the scene to read a little bit more. There it is. There into that surface, into that glass. And there's just a little bit more definition in this guy. There it is, right there. Try to be very quick in terms of knowing where the gesture is doing, what I'm working with, and how to get it, put together real fast little product sketches that are very mysterious looking. And I don't really believe in terms of getting, the, again, the purpose of today's stream is to understand what a gesture is. Just getting, again, an expression, real quick expression. So let's go back in again. And let me sharpen the stick up a little bit here. Let's go back in again. Another little study here. Notice. This is where my hand is on that pen, pencil, back here. When I go back into this area of my pencil, what I'm working with is a very simple principle. That's what I'm searching. This is what I'm searching for. My hands are back here. I'm just searching for a shape. I'm going to search through it, draw through it, and search very lightly. Keep it light until it's right. There's a basic little understanding right there. Now, once I found something, for example, once I find a, a system to work with here, now let's, let's kind of go back in again and add a little bit of a plane change here. Let's go back in and add this. No, no, on the side of the stick, really keeping it nice and gestured. Then, then turn it back. That's this whole process that I'm dealing with right here on the side with my hands back here, back in through here. That's called searching. I'm going to search. Now, the minute I'm, I'm now articulate my hands, the minute I see um, when I see something here very quickly, I'm going to rotate out of this into this gesture. Now I'm going to commit. I'm going to start to commit to what I'm starting to see. Come back in through here. Again, line weight change. Run back. Run back. A little bit of surface in here. Now, I notice the gesture is changing. I'm starting to define a little bit more. See, I'm trying to bring that out of the paper. Now, back to search again. Soften it off. Take it back. Soften it off. Take it back. Draw through it again. Pick this little area up here. Turn this around just a bit, pardon me, and then just going to complete that radius around the bend here. Complete that as I come into it. Connect the dots. Take this back. A little bit of a shelf there. Run through it. Hot spot. Again, a little more commitment. Back to the side of pencil, the paintbrush look. Highlight. Walk it across.
Weight change. Notice where my hands are again, down on the stick. Now I'm making the commitment. Around the form. And then right back in perspective. That's where the tray is, we're right there. Complete the shape. Run that across. There's a fast little gesture, but look how that whole thing comes together as a result of being extremely gesturally. Um, nothing really pinning things down. I'm, when I go through the, again, I said in the very beginning of the stream, so pardon me if we're done in here. The reason I've entitled this stream today, Product Design Gestures, is to get across the point that we're expressing ourselves looking for ideas. And I've made a definition beforehand about my, my interpretation of, of an idea is simply this. You burst into a concept. You burst into a thought. And that's what we're trying to get at here, to kind of really reinforce what we're doing. I'm starting to stick this in here. Let's get this guy put together. Let's go back in again. Notice, back in the hands here, search. Into a search. Looking for just for fluid shape. Just looking at forms. I mean, look how, look how expressive that is. I mean, I'm not, I'm not worried about how the line's perfect, no. Uh, do I want perfection? Not at all. I'm looking for an idea. So now that I've got that gesture down, let's stay in the side of pencil for a moment here. Come back and add a little bit of design line. Let's come back in through here. Notice that little that tells me there's a bit of a change right here. So it's almost like a Darth Vader look now. Look, look, just by adding lines in there. Now, I'm gonna come back in, change gears. Now let's come back in. Now search. Closest to me, a lot of line weight. Thick, back to thin, into that drop, into the form. Yeah, let's go around the side here. And there it is. Back in through here. I'm just going to indicate where that backside line is, but reinforce it up front here. And come back in again. Let's get that lens to work. Probably might move this around just a bit. Let's run that right through. Let's pick that back up again. Run through the shape. That does this. Let's get this design line here. It's going to get this guy to really kind of... Bit more weight in here, kind of show where the separation is. Come back underneath here again. Now back to the side of pencil. Now I'm going right back in through here. Hey, Die Hard, how are you? Good to have you on board. Nice to see you again today. So we're going through a little some ex just expressive little theme sketches here on gestures. What a gesture really means is expressing an idea, not being very committed to it, just simple as a pencil sharpener, everyday household item, doing a little bit of product development work. So there we are. So we come back and let's go back now. Notice, so back. I'm going back to the search mode now. I'm going to go back in and use this pencil as a paintbrush. I'm just going to tone in real quick. Pick up the accent where the undercut is. Change the weight. Into this surface. Back to the side of pencil. Tone it in. Take it down the surface. Apply that shape right off of here. Bring that, tighten that down just a bit. Tone it. And again, tone it. Look where the separation is. There it is right there. That comes down through here. A little bit of highlight. Again, let's bring that shape right through here. Pardon me, as I move around here, pardon me, folks, I just need to get this gesture down. Right into here. Stop it there where the radius is. Take it around the corner. And there you are. There's a package of four little expressive studies that kind of, oops, let's do this. It's going to crank this guy back here. There it is. Look at how expressive those guys are. Yeah, it's shading with the pencil is just neat. Again, I, I, I'm really I'm enamored with the fact that this, this Prismacolor pencil to me is an absolute piece of magic. Again, you can use the side of the pencil as a paintbrush, and again, changing from the, from the search mode, which is here, die hard, up to here, which is the commitment side, which means now that I see it, I'm going to start to really strike that thing and make it make it really plausible and have an impact on what I'm seeing here. So thanks very much for the input here, gang. So there's a there's a quick series of first passes here. Hopefully, that makes some sense to you. And let's do this. We got to add that little guy there. Again, just some real quick, let's add a little bit more tone to this thing too. 
just a little bit more surface here in terms of let's combine them. Put a mess right through here. So let's come back in through here and just very quickly begin to combine all these sketches as a story. A little bit of background. Probably as I turn around here. Just great fun. It kind of ties them all together for us here, gang. What do you think? Making sense? So far, so good. Let's do Let me, let me sharpen the stick here for a second here. Get this guy rolling. There's phase one. Let's go back and continue this whole story on. I just another set of sketches here to kind of work with here. Um, again, the whole purpose is to get the idea down of what exactly we're talking about as far as what a gesture is. A gesture is an expression. It's not a finished thought. It's not a final thought. It's just a, a burst of an idea. How do you feel about the thing? I mean, very, being very scratchy with the sketches and very loose with the lines. That's all part of the process. Um, to me, part of the process, the search side is looking for the things that make sense to you in terms of, that's why I, I work with the side of the pencil to start the whole idea of searching for the sketch. You're just kind of do this first. Let's come back in and just start with something here. Let's go a little rounder. Draw through it. Look at this. Know where my hands are? Back in the pencil. Back here. Searching. Back to here through here tone it down tone it just a series of spirals now let's begin to connect the dots let's go across the top let's kind of put that together here let's bring this shape downhill just a bit off of that guy and off of that guy notice using the side of the pencil just to set up the gesture and again very loose pardon me for moving around here but notice how it shelled that in very quickly by using the side of the pencil to create the whole process now let's let's put some commitment in place here we we'll come back in here there it is into this into this, build through it, build through it, into that design line that comes off of here. Oh, pardon me, we'll get this guy lined up here. A bit of dark here, knows I'm where my hands are now, down on the pencil, committing to it. Really interesting. Just a little bit more commitment, a little bit of tone. Taking the light source into account here, let's drive this back. Let's kind of pull it back to the side of pencil. Tone it in. And in an instant, you've got this thing just about really covered. Again, back to the side of pencil. Underneath. And to fill it. Highlight. Now, we'll just get this, get this guy into place here. Now some definition up the center line. Notice as I fade away, they get tighter as I'm going into the heart of the radius. There's a little detail work on top of that shape that kind of gives a little more expression to it. So there we have fastest what is it looking in the pen. <laughs> Let's go back and add a little bit more definition here. Bring up some of the weights. Probably means I turn this around just a bit here, gang. Again, a little bit more definition here. Tear it through the form. Back 
back from through. Not a lot, just a little bit of highlight there. Maybe a little more shadow underneath this guy that's going to get this line to kind of fly through here for us. And a little more definition underneath the shadow, just a little bit more core. There we are. It really kind of bounce that, that cylinder right out of there. Look how powerful that is. Pardon me, not, I don't mean my sketch. I mean just the, the concept of working with getting a gesture done, how it all begins to work together. Look how fluid that becomes. Interesting. So interesting. Now let's go draw through it. There's my pencil return. And there's my, yeah, pardon me as I move around here quite a bit. Sorry, guys. There we are. There's my surface. I mean, look how, look how simple that shape is. Man, I hope it works. Get power pencil sharper. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a Panasonic uh, B47. Very cool. There we are. Let's kind of sharpen up a little bit here. Once again, I'm really trying to really concentrate on how this thing begins to come together. Again, and one more time, and I think this is important, especially when you're dealing with volumetric sketch rendering skills or gestures, just bring an idea together, whether it's product, automotive, architecture, interior space, it all works in harmony. It does the following. Here's what we're looking at. Again, side of pencil, search. Back in, my hands are going to be back here, searching. Once again, just blocking it in. Notice, real loose. Getting a frame down and changing the impact, drawing through it real loosely. Just, I'm exploring. I'm searching for things that are working, things that are not. And I'm just a real, real loose sketcher. So once I've got that set up, now I come back in, add a little bit of crown through here. Let's get that all set up. Okay, let's, let's find my center line, run that back. Now I'm going to start to commit. Now I'm seeing it. Thick to thin. Back to thin. Line weight. Huge. Why bother with the backside? Just give a couple of those little depths right there. Look at, look at the energy in that sketch, hopefully. It just it starts to scream off the page because you know what you're after. Now let's kind of bring this down here to the center line. Let's peek this out a little bit more. Again, run it back. Pardon me, I move this around just a touch more. Let's move this back just a little bit inside here and take it back. Let's take it back over here. Take it back. Now, change the shape. Look at this. This is really cool. Look how that, that one line told me, hey, I can recess this guy. And this, let me stop right there for a moment. I'll go through a series of sketch rendering skills, for example, or ideas. Um, you're learning something, but when you draw a pencil sharper faster than most cars on the road, it's hard. <laughs> That's funny. So, but I want to slow down here. Look at by, by being very gesturally. Look how it changed that whole little that recess right there. Changed the actual look of this form. I'm going to put a recess in here, which tells me that this now center line dives just a little bit and drops in, comes back. In. That's the value of an expression. That's a gesture. It's amazing how it begins to function. Let's tighten down a little bit more. Let's take the surface back. Let's drop it down. Let's kind of pick up its base. Let's put a little tone in this thing. Bring it underneath and just draw through it just a moment to kind of reinforce this guy. Let's put that where that's going to be. Again, cross the fillet into the shape and fade it back to reflected light. Maybe you heard that one before. Into the carrier. Draw through it, back through it again. A little bit more reflective light in through here, just a little bit more reflection. And see how I use the side of that pencil to get that the effect without a lot of force? Go back in again here, folks. These are really, really fast gestures. So I hope I'm not going too quick here and confusing here. Everybody okay so far? A little bit of a cut line back here, a little bit more definition. Take it over the sidewall, run it through. Every one of those lines, in my opinion, well, let me rephrase, that's a horrible thing to say. Um, every one of those lines, telegraph an expression, a gesture, something that tells you the spirit in these sketches. And I think, I'm a firm believer in this, folks, and maybe I, I hope I don't offend anybody by making this comment, but I think I'm, I live by it, and I think it's absolutely true. Drawing is a reflection of your soul. How you feel about yourself, how you feel about your world, how you begin to promote uh, certain things, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Your drawings will telegraph to your audience how you feel about what you do. 
And uh, I'm going to be flat out uh, honest with you. I mean, I have a passion for drawing and, and creativity. Um, like you, it's insatiable. Am I still learning? Absolutely. You're listening to the dumbest guy in the world when it comes to drawing and skill levels, but I'm still learning every single day. Uh, just amazing. Hey, Basil Secret, how are you? Uh, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us here. I just noticed you joined the stream. Thank you very much for doing so. Uh, another edition. If you have any friends, uh, let them know. Man, we're doing some cool things here. Well, you are, not me. But again, I hope I stated that properly about my, my passion for, for this, this life or this approach to a profession. Uh, it has been so good to me, I can't wait to give it all back. Uh, and it's passionate for me. It's really saying that, you know what, how I feel about my sketches, I want people to realize I put down a line, I put it down, look, I, I keep using the term over the years, like spitting on the table. Really spit on the table like you mean it. And don't ever regret the fact that you put down an idea, and whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, that's not the important thing. The important thing is to get the ideas down. And in this case today, the idea is built around one very powerful term, and that's called gesture. To gesture something is to put an emotion behind it, give it a character, a personality. So that's what we're working on here. So here we go. Let's go back and tone a bit more here. Let's carry on just a bit. Line weight, that's going to kind of reinforce what that secondary line is here, get that into play in the harmony. Uh, no, notice, closest to me, for those of you who came in a little bit late, every line that I'm working with here, closest to me, I'm going to power up really thick to thin, let it fade, gives it much more depth. Let's go back in, let's add a little bit more here. Let's go back in and do this. Let's go to a rounder surface. Let's put that center line in place. Let's draw that, oops, pardon me, as I turn this around just a bit here again. Let that axle in place. Let me just go ahead and, go ahead and put some sharpener on this stick here. It's not going down that axle. I'm going to come to this one, and this one, and just build this shape. That to that. Now let's, kind of, let's fill in the blanks. Down the sidewall. Down the sidewall. Notice my hands are back in the pencil. I'm back here because, again, I'm still searching. I'm just going back and kind of pick it all together here. There it is there. There it is there. I'm back inside of the secondary ring. Where the container is and finish that one up there's a real loose little gesture about an idea all right i'm just going to come back in now i'm going to find some real power lines here let's come back in through here and get this guy and read there's the upper from a light source perspective and again back to the side of pencil to paint the surface tone it in tone it in follow the shape and bring it right on through line weight in the line weight and then a little bit of cast shadow inside this volume here. Come back out of it. And the texture. Really powerful line. This is set up a little bit of a dynamic up on top here. A more tone away from the light source. Draw through it. A little bit more power in there. And back to this guy. Now, down the sidewall, a little bit more strength, a little more reflectivity. Notice again, really using the side of that pencil to kind of really get the power down in terms of getting a reflection in this thing. So let's come back in through here. A little bit of an offset. Let's kind of crank that back. Let's crank that back. That's where it comes apart. Come back in again. Draw through it. Again, in the line weight. But more core. Again, into this base. And again, the more reflective quality here. Just kind of slow down and pick it up. Line weight there, there, and then again, hopefully, 
that settles the score right there. There's a simple little volumetric study right there. No one else I know could make a pencil shaver look so cool. <laughs> well, um, it, it's again the whole thanks very much, um, um, Basil. But I think the idea is for all of us to get into the habit when we set uh, to sit down and put together a sketch that we don't labor it when, in terms of uh, gee, it's got to be perfect or it has to be just so precise. I think the whole idea, the whole concept. Is getting it all put together with terms in terms of getting the flavor down that you want to establish. What's the gesture like? What's the emotion feel like? What's it all begin to tell you in terms of putting together a story? So I'm just gonna go back and sharpen this guy for a bit here. Here we are. Ready? Let me go back in here. Let's go back again. Back to search just to get the volume down. Real loose, just painting through, looking for a certain surfaces. Now that I found that, now I'm gonna start putting a commitment together. Wait. And the line weight, a little bit more truncation away from the light source, up on top, into the backside line, into that break, over the top again, just adding definition. Now that I've got the basic solid there, let's do a little sneaky thing here, a little bit of an offset back in through that does this. Now notice my hands are down on the pencil, which means I'm committing to a real return razor here. Like in other words, the section comes up. Up, it goes in, up over the top, and over the top. There's a, there's a good example of how contour can help us really work on certain things. 07, hope everything is going great for you. As always, drawing look on. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, Lenny? Good to see you on board. Thank you so much for joining us. It's cool. Let me sharpen this tech here, guys. Let's go back in through here. Pick up this line, run it right through my contact. Break the surface up on front here. Let's get this guy set up. Let's come underneath a little bit of tone. Really quick, I get the surface to read here. So maybe a little bit of an offset in the corner and the radius, and a little more tone back. And maybe there's a little bit of section or, or color change back through here. Maybe it's just enough of that. Comes off of that backside line. And I recess this guy just a bit more, a little more definition. Notice coming back down the really down on the end of the stick, really starting to make a commitment here. Over the top of that, a little bit of a recess. Let's tone that in. Notice where, where my hands are, right down at the bottom of that stick, really making the gesture count. Running through it. Again, then the fillet. Highlight, more shadow. Again, use the side of that pencil to really paint in what we're trying to look at here. Let's kind of get this line straightened up here. There we are. And let's, let's return this thing. There's my receptacle. There's my return line. There I am right there. Yeah, isn't that cool? There you are, gang. Just a series of what ifs. Just putting together some volumetrics here. And uh, let's see. Any questions so far? So good. All right, let me go back in through here. Let's kind of put them all together here. Even the backgrounds. Some of, the, some of the vignette stuff, just keep it nice and gesturally. Just kind of combine the forms here, just kind of dark some lights. A lot more information here in terms of just getting the screams down and really cranking with this thing. Let's do this. Block this in just a bit more. Do a little bit of this. A little shadow definition down in here. Again, notice, same thing.
There it is, gang. This is a nice little page composition of some really quick and dirty, fast thumbnail sketches here. Let me do this. Uh, I've got a lot of time here. Do you mind if I crank on a couple more here? So there's phase two. Let me just kind of get this. And for those of you who came in late, let me just go back in here just for a second here. And um, before I pick up another sketch here, let me just get this out of the way. Uh, we'll go back and review this in just a moment here. For those of you who came a little bit late, I just want to bring up the recap as to why I went to this story today with this whole idea of just product design gestures. We finished up uh, last Friday, I finished up with the stream, for example, looking at this uh, this G12 series. And, um, <clears throat> pardon me, did a lot of, uh, last Friday, a lot of rear three-quarter sketches that were interesting, but they didn't have that same impact in terms of what, the, it still looked a bit too automotive and not enough of the galactic look we're after. Shadow could be my, uh, my, uh, my, my, my mentor on that one. I think he knows exactly what we're talking about. Um, so um, we, we went back in, a, and, and after I during the rear three-quarter study, I went back and looked at the front three-quarter graphics and said, you know, this is interesting. We need to go back and identify what the front end looks like. It's pretty tailored, very severe, uh, almost has a real sport character to it. It looks like a GT car. Um, Long profile graphics, IMSA lighting and so forth, canards and a large uh, air dam down underneath. I brought, hey, how are you doing? I brought, good to see you. Not a problem at all, good to have you on board. So this is where we're at in terms of the survival cell in the center. Then we have these little canards on the outside. This very, very strong um, uh, ground spitter. Um, not quite happy yet with the, um, the light. We just put that in there to insulate and see what it looked like. Um, but nonetheless, look at, look at the form in this thing. I thought, geez, how, how, that's interesting. We've got a good front end identity. But when I went back to the rear three quarter studies, let me go back and just show you what I'm referring to here, if I can find them. Yeah, they were they were more like this, um, very much automotive. Again, the same kind of basic concept. They're very much automotive. Uh, look, uh, closing the wheels off in the rear. Um, just um, just don't know if that was the right approach. And there was another another one taken here, and that's it. So that, that's basically what we're after. Last week it was much more automotive looking. So I went back and, and uh, investigated the stack and said, no, we need to go back and make this thing a lot more space-like and, and very, very graphic looking and, and evil. So this started the, the process. Uh, last Friday, I went ahead and did this sketch, went from rear to front. Then on, uh, on yesterday's stream, we went back in and really detailed some of the neat stuff we're looking at here. Let's just go back and this is backwards. Um, this is, um, we did a pencil sketch yesterday of the interior cockpit study on the right viewer after. And also with you know, the idea of this wraparound wearing the system, um, um, the uh, hand controls for um, the pilot to operate, and then we change from the big large screen to two control pods on each side of the driver, which I think is much more, much more effective in terms of um, function and use. So your hands are right there, and you also you just reach over and begin to command the certain controls that you're after. The glass sensor is there, it's at the, the floating tunnel console is still there. So we're really strong in terms of what the overall looked at. But the big change was to get that ribbon of telltales across the upper, the glass um, IP display systems, which gives you peripheral sight lines and, um, and glass uh, and, and, and viewing purposes. And also the, the control panels and the seating system. So the pilot's actually wearing this thing. So there we are. There, there's the interior study. Then we went, let me kind of get these out of the way, pardon me. And we went from that, and after looking at some of the interior things, I went, I went back and said, you know, the, the, the rear three quarter needs a little bit more finesse. So I went back and did this one first. Again, yesterday, again, we just concentrated on the pencil sketch to get the gesture down. So it's a pretty simple sedated backdrop on this thing, uh, intakes and, and lures and gills and so forth. Then this big, large, flat canard that runs right through the entire machine to, to draw the air through it. So that was one of the rear three quarter sides we worked on, and uh, the second one was this one, a little bit, little busier, um, same same basic concept, but uh, uh, again, uh, do we want to be a little more dramatic in terms of dropping that off? Um, again, with the with the hydrogen systems behind it and the um, exhaust pieces and the like, um, make it yeah, make it stick to the ground is exactly right. Uh, and then anyway, down below here, then again, adding a little, little detail up on top during braking conditions, like an a la F-35 uh, uh, air brake, so to speak, uh, to kind of give it some personality. So that's a bit of an overview of how we started the program today. Um, but again, the, 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 I started there, and then when, because of that gesture or that whole process I worked on yesterday, I thought it might be good to go back in and just do a series of, again, pencil sketches on just getting a gesture down. Let me go back to this for a moment here. And those gestures began to look like this. Very expressive sketches to make sure we get an idea of how do, how do, how do we put down an idea? What, is it, what does it do to take that 
into another dimension here and without getting too restrictive in terms of being very tight and orderly. So these are two studies we did here. And just for what it's worth, I've got a couple minutes, let's kind of crank on a couple more here. Again, I just want to really hammer home this whole concept of gesture. Back on the hands, right through it. Just feeling my way through it, just a, almost like an emotional, just a real, really quick series of gesture lines. They're just to kind of file through the entire form. Now that you search that shape, now you've got something to work with. There's a very light apparatus to it. Now let's go back in and come back in and start to look at the line width. I'm going to turn this upside down for a moment here and really hammer home where I am now. Thick to thin. And turn it upside down, right side up again. Follow through, take it back, and then lose it. Back to that center line. Run that through. Again, change the character. Now that I've got a form to work with. Again, thick. Pardon me for turning around here just a bit. Again, end of the peak. A little bit of reflected light into the glass. Now to the base. Come out of it again. Take the thin. Got that over the back. A little bit of appendage back here. A bit of a cut line change in here, a little more drawing definition. A little bit more glass surface in here. And line weight. I'm going to turn this up and down for a moment here, gang. And flying right through the shape. There it is. It just happens very quickly in terms of how. Just interesting, interesting thing. Hangs on for some more quick. <laughs> Hangs up. <laughs> there we go. So again, just, just for what it's worth, just a couple of nice loose little studies here, guys. Back to light. Wait. A little shadow underneath. Pardon me, I'm moving out of the drift here probably. Working within the surfaces. Let's kind of sharpen this up a little bit more. Let me turn this upside down here for a moment here again. Sorry. Pick it up a little bit more. The highlight, the fillet.
So there's phase two. You know, simple, that all comes together. Yes, we need to install some more handrails around here. I keep hanging. <laughs> here we go. Let me sharpen this up a little bit here. I mean, it's interesting that something is, 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 is dramatically different as this. I just want to maybe wrap up some things here in the end here. Um, just, just by doing something as simple as this. Very soft, very melodic. There you go. There's a, just a simple, just very simple little gesture sketches on basic product design research work or just um, exploratory work. And uh, and that's what it takes, gang. I mean, I, I'm going to rephrase that. I didn't mean that to be <clears throat> so abrupt. Um, it, 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 it requires an awful lot of just searching and seeking certain things. And when you find the right rhythm on certain things, it all comes together for you. It's really interesting how it all begins to pretty... Uh, it falls into place because you've got a pattern to work with and you know what your, your mission is. And I've always said this when uh, working with this, these programs. Um, I've always felt no matter how simple the rendering is, how complicated the rendering is, or how simple the drawing is, or how complicated the drawing is, there's one thing that always comes true. It's always best to know the very end from the very beginning. And that's a real trick. How do you, how do you begin to really take some of these shapes? And begin to see it. That doesn't mean, for example, you're going to know it from the very beginning to the end and follow it step by step. But I've always used this analogy too in the teaching side of life and also from a professional side of life. That when you put down a commitment, creativity will talk back to you. You'll hear voices, for example, but yeah, this is right. Do this, do that, change this, change that. That does not change the alteration of the fact that you are really uh, starting out on a concept uh, platform by knowing the end. You have a vision. Now, the vision might change a little bit. It's going to maybe twist and turn and, and go from uh, one level to another. But that doesn't destroy the initial vision is that you know what you're after. And creativity comes back. If you know that, creativity comes back with a real, really strong, resonating voice saying, this is great. Try this. Try that. It works with you. Without that aspect of being involved in, for example, a gesture or a concept or bursting into an idea, we're absolutely lost. And I don't mean that to be critical. We're lost. We're always thinking, oh, I hope this works. Gee, I hope this works. One of the things I always listen to in working with people, for example, from a professional perspective, if someone comes along and says, you know, well, trust me, this will work. Believe me, trust me, this will work. My first instinct is this. This ain't working. 
If you have to tell somebody, trust me, this will work, you know in your heart of hearts it's not working. I don't believe in that one bit. I just believe on spitting on the table, letting it stick, and saying, hey, what do you think of that? Um, and uh, and I'm, not, I'm not being trying to be indifferent here. I just really feel committed to the fact when I see something, I go after it tenaciously. It might not be right, but I'm going to go after it. Why? Because I'm going to learn something from it. That's the beauty of the whole nine yards. So let's see. Pixelate, love how some of the small strokes and highlights add so much care. Yeah, it does. It just takes little differences here and there. It's like putting, uh, it just, it's like, why would you, for, the best analogy I can give you, for example, Sid Mead years ago made a comment that live in infamy about basic drawing skills. Um, and he used uh, fashion as an example. And I, and I love it because it still fits. Why would you go out there, for example, and buy a $10,000 tailor-made suit? Beautiful. Silk, whatever it might be, a, a $10,000 silk suit. Then go to Walmart and get a plaid shirt to go with it. It just doesn't make any sense. So that's the idea behind the idea of drawing. If you have a real silk pattern and a real set and a, and a tailored piece to work with, finesse it. Give it the right accents and the right little additions and, and details to make it so much more powerful. So you've been very kind here again. Did anybody have any questions in closing here or things that I can uh, kind of wrap up on? Um, really, really appreciate all of you coming on board. There are some great questions, uh, some great input. Uh, Brett, you still there? Hopefully this has been of some help to you. I'm going to go back and cover some of the things you talked about yesterday about how do you do it for uh, uh, about how you begin to uh, work with uh, round forms or, or lines of uh, that kind of character, for example. Um, uh, thanks very much, Chip, and pretty awesome to have you on board too, Chief. Thank you so much. Anybody else? <clears throat> uh, just kind of, I, I just want to make sure that I've communicated the, the concept here today of this stream. The title was Product Design Gestures. Notice, not a concept, but a gesture, an expression how to put together a thought or an idea, which will lead you to a concept and then begin to refine it more and more and more and more. You can take any of these shapes that we work with here today, any number of these guys, once you begin to get the expression down, begin to really get the gesture squared away and begin to finesse them and make changes as you go. And that's the thing that's pretty neat about this whole process. So if there's no other further commentary here, gang, again, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today. It's always great to be a part of your audience. And uh, thank you for following. Uh, just really interesting. So, uh, last little announcement. Um, I just got word about an hour ago, about, about uh, yeah, about one o'clock or one there, about an hour and a half ago, that the the publication for drawing skills and um, uh, drawing and dynamics is ready to roll. We're going to get that up on the um, on the website as soon as we can. And I, I want to take a moment here since he's on the line to really um, uh, well, yeah, you know, thank you, Betts. It's good to have you on board, and all the best to you out there. And, and please uh, tell Sam I said hello. Uh, okay, uh, uh, let me finish this thought here, uh, Brett, and I'll address your question here. I uh, just want to take a moment to express my sincere thanks to Pixel here. He's been on board all day, and he's the guy who's been working with me on this uh, publication for the drawing book for the website. Uh, Pixel, I can't thank you enough for great work that you've done. Um, you're an awesome talent, and I respect the fact that um, you're one of my, one of my main men, uh, people I love to work with. So thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, Brett, go ahead and ask your question, please. Thank you. <clears throat> You still there? Hope, hope, hope. In the meantime, I think you're going to find this book, uh, this publication that uh, we put together of, of some value to. It's really been uh, about a 30-page special. It covers everything from perspective to basic shading skills and the like. So it's uh, hopefully the first of maybe many coming out of the process. I'm going to scare a pickle here, but I'd love to be able to author a couple more and work with him on it because he's a great talent to work with. Which would be a better? Which would be better for a beginner? Your book or your course on the two, on the uh, uh, from it? To, well, um, <clears throat> I think uh, to answer your question, there, Brett. And again, I'm going to be very careful to answer this properly without uh, sounding self-serving. Um, um, I, I would. I think it would be more advantageous for you at this stage of the game to go to the website and purchase the drawing programs because they take you can stop. You can stop. You can watch it come together. You can stop it in slow motion and go back and review some things. And again, please forgive me. I am not trying to be self-serving. I've listened to you, and I've really respected your questions over the course of the past few weeks since you've been on board here. And based on what you're trying to pick up on and what I'm trying to work with you on, I believe with all my heart that the website would be the first thing I'd go to to get that down. To look at some of the film work there. Then we can kind of work with you to get the publication down. 
and time to come when you think you can get with it um, to support what you're seeing on the website. So I hope that answer is fair enough to you. And again, please forgive me. I'm not trying to steer uh, the money train to one or the other. I just think based on our conversation and the questions you've had on uh, coming up with basic drawing skills, I think the lessons that are available on my website now, drcontrast.com, would be a great benefit for you. So I uh, hope that answers your question and I hope I didn't offend you with the answer. So thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah, the booklet pixel is just it's dropped that awesome. I mean, the graphics you've got in there is just really, uh, it's paramount, uh, great stuff. Uh, the story being told, I think, behind it all in the backdrop. And uh, um, so hopefully the next generation will be, I'd love to do one on just basic rendering skills if you're up to it. Um, I, I, I know you're very busy, but in time to come, not right away, I'd love to have that uh, part of it. I've got one called Genesis. It'd be really cool to work with. Sure did, in fact, I'm buying your course. Well, again, uh, thank you for your understanding, Brett. Um, I, I'm not at all being self-serving. I just want to make sure you're doing the right thing, and I want to help you. And if you go that route, please feel free. Uh, I've said this to everybody who's joined my, joined my website and picked up the courses. Feel free to email me about questions like we're doing here now. Uh, I'm very accessible. If I don't get to you right away, I will. Uh, but I just want you to know that I think that would be the right way to go. So. Um, anybody here in closing here? Oh, let me just say this in closing too. Uh, folks, thanks so much for all of you for tuning in. Uh, if, uh, for example, if I've said something right here today, let me know. If I've said something wrong, tell me. Uh, I really want to know. I want to build my audience. I want to be really strong. Um, uh, just really interesting. I want to be a real strong uh, uh, proponent of good, uh, good sketch rendering skills. I have a lot to learn like you do, but I want to be of some help to all of you. And I want to thank you for the time spent here. So please let me know how I'm doing, um, and please, if you have any friends that are interested in this kind of work, uh, pass the stream along. My name, I'd love to build the audience. So far, we're doing very well. And uh, again, uh, please visit my website at drcontrast.com. And to all of you, Chip, um, uh, Captain Nemo, uh, Pixel, Betts, um, all of you, I'm Brett. Uh, if I miss anybody, forgive me. Um, I really, really appreciate you joining forces with me here today. All the very best to you, and I always uh, sign off with this because I think it's absolutely paramount. It's a great way to end certain things. Always, never forget to remember the dare to be great because you are. Thanks very much, gang. Have a great day, and we'll look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at uh, 1.30 where we we'll, uh, pick up some lesson stuff. Thank you. All the very best.